Okay, guys, we are going to um, talk about inferencing today. Um, sometimes you might hear it's called making inferences. You may also hear people say drawing conclusions. Either way, it's basically the same process. And um, we make inferences or draw conclusions um, pretty much on a daily basis in our everyday lives, but we just may not really even realize we're doing that. Um, so what is an inference? An inference is when you make um, a really smart guess. You have to go beyond what the author actually tells us. So we have to go beyond the author's words okay, to make a smart guess um, that helps us understand something from the story that the author doesn't actually come out and say. So inferences might start like my guesses, or maybe, perhaps, it could be that. So we are going to um, practice today making an inference. We're going to start out using a picture. Sometimes it's easier when we can look at a picture and make inferences than it is trying to make inferences about text or the things we're reading. So. I'm going to give you a few minutes to look at this picture, and as you look at the picture, I want you to look at it like you uh, would if you were a detective. Think about what you see. What clues do you see here in this picture? And we're going to use the clues we see. We're going to put the clues we see in the picture with our background knowledge. Now, background knowledge is something I have in my brain already. It's things I already know from my own experiences. So we'll take clues from the picture, put that with our background knowledge to come up with our inference. Okay, our smart guess, we're going to go beyond what we can actually see in the picture to understand something we can't actually see. Okay, so take a few minutes to study it. Okay, now as I start picking out some clues for the picture, I'm going to record them in this graphic organizer. It's going to help me kind of organize my thoughts and come up with an inclusion about this picture. Okay, so what do I see? Well, when I first look at this picture, I see two baseball players. On a bench. Okay, now this is just what I can actually see. I'm not making any guesses at this point. What can I see in the picture? I see two baseball players sitting on a bench. That's clues from the photographs, things I can actually see. Okay. I see one player has his head buried in his hands. Okay. What else do I see in the picture? I see this other guy. His expression isn't looking very happy or hopeful or excited. His expression to me looks a little like he's a little concerned. So in the picture I see a concerned look on the player's face. Okay, So that's what I can actually see in the photograph. Those are my clues from the picture. Okay, When I take these clues and put it with my background knowledge, okay, if I've ever played sports or seen a lot of sports games played, in my mind I'm thinking, well, most of the time when teams are winning, they don't look like this guy. They're happy. You can see excitement on their faces. Okay? They have a much different expression. Okay? Usually when teams are winning, they're not burying their heads in their hands like this other player over here. So um, from my own personal experiences, the games I've watched games I've played on sports teams of my own, my background knowledge tells me that when players have concerned looks and they're burying their heads in their hands over on the bench, that usually means the game isn't going very well. Maybe something bad just happened or they're losing. So with these clues from the photograph and my background knowledge, I'm going to infer that perhaps Okay, there's that language. Like I said, inferences may, may start like maybe, perhaps, it could be that, because this is really just a smart guess we're making using clues from the text or pictures 
and our background notch. So my inference is that perhaps the team, okay, so perhaps the team is losing an important game. Okay, so maybe it's like the championship or uh, just an, a big game, or maybe they're playing their rivals. I'm just guessing, based on the clues I see in the photograph, this concerned look, the fact this guy's got his head buried in his hands like he's really disappointed, I'm guessing perhaps the team is losing an important game, okay? So that's basically how we make inferences or draw conclusions um, about things we read or things we see. So now that we've practiced with a picture, we're going to try this with text. Remember, text is words, words written on paper. Uh, it could be articles, a short paragraph, a whole story. Any kind of um, words that we read, that's what we call text, okay? So we're going to use the same process, the same steps. Instead of looking at a picture this time, then we're going to be reading text. So we're going to read this short paragraph. We're going to pull out clues from what we read and plug them in our organizer here. And we're going to use our clues with our background knowledge, what I already know from my own experiences, to make a inference or a smart guess about what we read. So let's go ahead and read. Megan was very excited. Today her mom was taking her ice skating. They had never been to the ice skating rink before. On their way there, Megan's mom had to pull the car over numerous times to study a map. She even stopped at a gas station to ask for help. So the question asks, what conclusion can you draw? Okay, another way of wording this is, what inference can you make? Making inferences, drawing conclusions, it's the same steps, okay? So what conclusion can we draw based on what we read, okay? So I'm going to underline some of the important clues or the important pieces of text evidence that I picked out of this as I read. Okay, it says, Megan was very excited. Today her mom was taking her ice skating. They had never been to the ice skating rink before. I think this is an important clue, and in a minute I'll explain why. On their way there, Megan's mom had to pull the car over numerous times to study the map. Okay, so she had to pull the car over numerous times to study a map. Okay, then it says she even stopped at a gas station to ask for help. So this is what it says. This is what the author actually comes out and tells us in the text. So I'm going to plug those details in to, okay, so I'm plugging my clues from the passage into the organizer. It said they'd never been to the ice skating rink before. That's what the text tells me. The text also says her mom pulled the car over numerous times to study the map. Numerous. That means not just once or twice, but Sounds like several times she had to pull over and look at a map. And again, these are things I'm pulling straight out of the text, or text evidence. Okay. And finally, she stopped at a gas station to ask for help. There's my text clues. This is what the, action, the author actually told us in the story. The question asks, what conclusion can we draw? Well, looking at the clues here and thinking about what I know from my own experiences, my background knowledge, I know that anytime I'm driving someplace I've never been before, I usually have to learn how to get there. I have to figure out where it is, know what roads to take to get there. Okay, so I have to usually look it up on a map or um, ask a friend for directions. Anytime I'm going somewhere new, those are things I have to do. I have to figure out how to get there, okay? Um, 
Uh, my background knowledge also tells me that anytime people study maps, it's because they're trying to figure out where they're going or how to get there. So the fact that Megan's mom has to keep pulling over to study a map must mean she's trying to figure out how to get somewhere. Okay. And when it says she has to pull over numerous times, that tells me she's having some trouble finding it. Okay. If not, if she, if she um, wasn't having difficulty finding this place, she probably wouldn't have to pull over numerous times to study the map. And last, it says she stopped at a gas station to ask for help. So that tells me even with the map, Meg Megan's mom was having difficulty finding the ring. She had to finally just pull over and ask someone to help her. So I'm inferring, my conclusion is that maybe Megan's mom is lost. She's lost. She couldn't figure out those directions on the map. She's not where she is. She's not sure she, where she is, and she's not sure how to get to the rink. She's lost. Okay, that's my conclusion. So when we look at our answer choices here, which of these best matches my thinking from my organizer? Could we conclude it's Megan's birthday? Well, there's really no evidence from the text that would make me think it's Megan's birthday, so I'm going to mark that one out. Megan and her mom are lost. Oh, now I'm going to put a star by that one because that one sounds very similar to what I wrote on my paper here. Kind of matches my thinking really closely. So I'm liking choice B, but I'm not going to mark it as my answer until I make sure and read all my choices. C says Megan's mom likes to drive. Okay, again, as I look at my text evidence and I think back to the background knowledge I, I was thinking about as I looked through these clues, nothing in the evidence makes me think that C would be the best answer. So I'm going to go with B. What conclusion can I draw? I can infer, conclude that Megan and her mom are lost. Now, did the author come right out and say that in the text? No. We had to do what? We had to make inferences or draw conclusions to understand that. The author didn't come right out and tell us that. But as a reader, it's important for me to understand they're lost to, to really get the overall meaning of the story. So that's why making, inferencing is, making inferences is such an important skill. So um, now that we've practiced a little bit together, you guys are going to get the same organizer that I used in our practice here. And you guys are going to do... Um, draw a conclusion of your own using a different passage.